All right, we're live. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're making it happen. We got to get a win. We got to get a victory here. We got to get a victory here. Uh, let's bring in Alex. Wait, where is Alex? I don't see him. Answer your questions. Oh, wait, let me put that in. Put your, put your questions below. Put your questions below. Okay, hold on. Let me pin that. Pin it. Pin comment. There we go. There we go. Okay, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? It is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. We're doing some Q&A. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Monica. Hey, Denise. Hey, Merritt Wolf. Hey, Dance Salova. Evan's my brother? Wow. All right. Very cool. I, I almost had a brother, you know. I, was, I had a brother who was a year older than me, but 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 passed. Uh, and I wouldn't have been born, so. Now we got a new brother, Stevens. Steven's Bros Tax Service is my brother. All right. All right. Alex is back. We're back. Okay, guys, here's the drill. You guys ask questions. Alex picks. He answers them. I answer them. We move on to the next one. That's the format. How you liking? How you liking? How you liking it so far, Alex? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I get to grow and bring more value to to the audience and. Yeah, why, you, why not? you grew through it. So through the last one, you were kind of nervous at the beginning and it took a long time to get through some stuff. But then it, then we found the rhythm. It was happening. Yeah. So it was good. Now, let me tell you, yesterday I did it with Mark for, for two. He couldn't do the first one because he had his kids. So we did huh? two, two games, two IG lives. I won both my games. Don't say that. Are you saying that it's my fault because you I'm lost not, right now? Is I'm that just what? saying. Wow. I, I don't. Mark. I'm 0 and 1 right now with Alex. I feel like we need to start okay. keeping track of where I'm getting wins. I, I, I think, I think, I think, I think, of all the people, right? Like you, you believe in like that kind of like magical. Wow, wow. I'm a big believer in environment and in uh, you know surrounding yourself with people that make you win and do better. All right. It could be a one-off, guys. It could be a one-off. We'll see what happens. All right, ask your questions. Alex is ready. I'm ready. Let's go. All right, what's the p best platform other than YouTube? Um, it depends on what your focus is, what your business is. Instagram can be it as well. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I think... For me, for, for, so for us, for us, Facebook is still the best. Uh, for, for our school, so that's where we promote, that's where we have our, we post our photos, that's where we get our students to engage. Um, so Facebook, actually mostly it's Facebook. Facebook would be first for us, uh, then it would be uh, YouTube, uh, then it would be Instagram. Those would be the kind of the order for our school business. Evan, for you? I mean, your whole business is on YouTube, right? Business model, basically. YouTube is the best for long form. And because whatever you might, whatever you post lives forever. TDS has a unique case in that. So the school that Alex runs um, allows you to do events, allows you to do photo galleries, allows you to tag people in pictures, right? So organically, Facebook sucks. Like if, if we post something on Facebook to our Facebook page, it's not going to blow up and get tons of views. We're using it for the events and for the tagging and for the community aspect, which is great for a local business if you're putting on events. Um, so it depends on your case. I think YouTube is for everybody and it's great because it lives forever. So the content, like the videos Alex makes now in five years will still be getting him views that leads to interest for the channel and for the business. Um, after that, then it depends. I think if you're doing ads, Instagram and Facebook are probably the best right now. Uh, if you have a business audience, you want to go LinkedIn. If you skew younger, you want to go TikTok. Um, if you're great at visuals, you want to be on Instagram. So it depends on what you're good at with where you have an audience, like where your market is, and that's where you want to be creating. Awesome. Yeah. What do you say to a 50-year-old trying to do YouTube? Do it. Get it. Let's go. Just do it. Gee, let's, just do I'll it. Wait till you're just... 51. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. Yeah. So that answers it. <laughs> uh, no, I said that answers it. Just do yeah. it. Uh, Tonight, make a video right now. 
That's the best thing you can do. How do you believe something that isn't possible in the eyes of other people, even docs, but I know? So how, so when people don't believe in you, essentially, so people don't believe in you, how do you, but you, yes. Well, okay, I know a lot about that. Okay, yeah. So um, surround yourself with, in an environment that will foster it if the people in, in your immediate environment don't believe in it. So when I first took over the school as an instructor, I wanted to do huddles at the end of all my dance classes where I inspire people and share stories and help them grow. And uh, for a dance school that has 10 other instructors and lots of helpers, uh, they found that to be very weird. Everybody believed that a dance school is just supposed to be a dance school where people come in, they learn a right turn, and then they leave. And for me, I believe that I can give so much more value than just dancing. Dancing is a base, but that's not a measure of what we can offer our, our students and what I can offer the world. And so for the first two, three years, it was hard. Uh, even my partner didn't understand what I wanted to do. And so fortunately, I had Evan, uh, who did believe in my vision, and also I had... I had videos, I would watch entrepreneur videos, I'd watch Kevin Hart, I love Kevin Hart for example, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and I'd, and I'd follow, listen, read about other entrepreneurs and other people who, who, who at the beginning people did not believe in, but they, they kind of, I won't say haters, it's not about haters, but they kind of pushed through those mountains and walls and they found their voice. So um, how do you do it? Surround yourself uh, if, you know, if it's not the people immediate in your environment it, with knowledge that does make you believe that what you do is important. And I won't say it's easy, but coming out on the other side now, so five years later, you know, if I look at the business that I'm building now and the people in my business, the instructors in my business and the volunteers in my business and the students now believe in what I'm doing, um, it's possible. It's possible. It is possible. So if you believe in it, don't, don't give up. I think the biggest mistake I would have made in my life is giving up on this dream and not being where I belong. And, and it starts with, I think belonging starts with self-acceptance and being gentle on yourself and, uh, and pushing through. But it definitely helps when you, when you surround yourself in the right environment. So sometimes it's being real and being like, these people who don't believe in me, uh, they belong somewhere else. Because everybody belongs, but me, they belong somewhere else. And what I need right now are people in an environment that fosters and supports what I'm trying to create. So that's, that's my thing. Evan, what do you think? Do the people who are crit criticizing you have the life that you want? Heck no, man. They hate their life. They hate their life. The people who are criticizing you hate their life. They never chase down their thing. They're constantly living in fear of judgment. They hate their life. They're in, they're in, you, should, you should run away from their opinions. And so step one is eliminating the negativity from your life. And maybe that's a friend, like Alex talked about his partner who, who you know, was with him at the time. Like, you can't be with a partner who doesn't support your dreams. That's like the worst thing in a partner. Not that they're a bad person, just not, not what you need. You need to eliminate the negativity in your life from whatever source that's coming from. Step two is then, you've got this void. So now you're just by yourself because you cut out all these people. Step two is you got to fill it. So to Alex's point of, you watch videos and you read books and you start going to different events and you start trying to meet people who believe the same thing that you believe, right? You have to, because otherwise you're going to stay stuck and you're going to be in the same spot next year looking back and saying, I still have these great ideas and still nobody believes in me and I'm still not doing enough work and I'm, I'm ready. To. That's the process. Yeah. Awesome. Evan turning up the fire. Is that what that was? All right. All right. A little bit at the beginning there. It was good. Uh, right. I decided to go to... Uh, so I decided to go the traditional route, route with my book. How do I find a great literary agent? Help. Evan? I mean, 
I don't have yet experience in publishing books. At some point I will, but until then, how do you find a great literary agent? Um, I mean, lit agents aren't that hard to find. You, you type in literary agent, you see what com companies are up there and you introduce yourself. The, the problem is literary agents, uh, like writing a book, unfortunately, is not enough. People don't care that you wrote a book. They want to know how you're going to sell the book. It almost doesn't matter. Like for the book itself that you have, it almost doesn't matter what the book is as long as you have an audience. And that's the reality of the publishing world, right? Like book sales were going down. Book sales were declining every year. And then they started making deals with influencers, YouTubers especially, and you start seeing book sales start to go up again. And now that's become most of the industry is they, they just want people who they know that can sell the book. So if this is just a one-off thing that you're trying to get this one book done, um, there may not be a lot of options, unfortunately, if you don't have an audience. You want to think, like, who do you know who can help promote this book? The marketing is just as, if not more important than what is in the actual book itself. Uh, if this is a long-term play for you, like, you want to be an author. This is your goal. This is your dream. You want to be a published author then you need to start building up an audience ASAP. You need to start posting content. You need to get your YouTube channel going. You need to get your Instagram content going. You have to start building an audience. And, and the more you start building an audience, um, the more people are going to want to work with you. So, you know, I'm just, just as, as a riff off of that idea, you know, I think about um, like Harry Potter, for example. If the first book got released now, would it still reach the same heights as it did 10 to 15 years ago when, when it was first released? Right, you think about just how it exploded. Because what you're basically saying is you gotta, I mean, to have real success, you gotta come in with an audience yourself, some way to promote, right? Because she was a no-name person, barely making ends meet. Mm -hmm. Huh. But, it's a hard life. No, but like a lot of, a lot of the people like the publishing industry has changed a lot since Harry Potter. A lot of the people yeah. who who used to make those deals are, are like they've they've gotten laid off or they've been transitioned out um, because if there's no solid, if you're expecting the publisher to, to sell the book for you, get into they'll get into stores, but they're not going to market it for you. And if you're expecting them to, um, it's just it's not the way that the industry works anymore. So now, if you want a book just because you want to have a book, if Alex wants to write a book and self-publish it or just have it for his students or whatever, awesome. Like, you could do that tomorrow. That's easy. No problem. Um, but if you want to have a published book and have a publisher that actually cares about it, then, then you need to have an audience. All right? Because everything else, even, like, referrals, it won't, it won't really make a huge deal. Like if I said, hey, here's my lit agent. I love her. She's great. You should talk to her. It's going to be the same. She's going to ask me the same questions. Uh, and if you don't have an audience, she's not going to want to work with you, even though she's fantastic. Yeah. There. Uh, Evan, what do you think about TikTok? What do you think uh, about TikTok, so, Alex? Okay, yeah, there well, you go. funny. So I just got into TikTok only like five months ago. Still don't fully get it. I do know that in terms of an audience, it's a way younger demographic, right? So if I look at my, if I look at the studio, I mean, if I look at the clients that come into our studio, our average age is about 26 to 38, most of us. Uh, when you look at the TikTok audience, you know, you have 12, 13, 14, 15, right? A lot of the influencer are in their early 20s, um, so it depends on the industry you're in. It's, it's, uh, I don't know what the conversion is like, to be honest, for me, you know, whether you blow up on TikTok uh, and how that leads to, let's say, sales. Um, you know, it's a social influencer. I mean, you could use that, blow up on TikTok, and leverage that with partnerships with different companies, right? Something like that. That could be possible. Not something I lean into. Evan, I mean, what do you think? Uh, I think it depends on your use case. So for me, I don't do a ton on TikTok. I think, listen, the benefit of TikTok is 
you can get exposure in just in terms of volume of views that you can't get from anywhere else if you're starting from scratch. Like if I was starting a brand new YouTube channel, nobody knows who I am. I'm starting a brand new YouTube channel from scratch versus I'm going to start a TikTok account. I could start getting views on my videos in TikTok where YouTube's going to take me just forever to do it. So mm -hmm. you can grow faster. To Alex's point, you're growing to a younger demo, which maybe you care about. Maybe you just want numbers, right? Like maybe you just want to be able to say, I did, I have X number of people, right? And that allows you to get other brand deals and, you know, that could be a model for you. Uh, you know, for Alex, it's, we're trying to convert it to sales. We want people to sign up and take classes. Um, so it's, it's still right now a little too young, but it's getting there. It's, it's moving up, it's scaling. The best use that I find with it is I like making, so when the creative tools are, are awesome. If I didn't have an editor, I'd probably do a lot more with TikTok because mm -hmm. they just have a lot of fun tools that you can use, especially on the music side that allow me to, uh oh, I'm gonna die. I died, very sad. They've got a lot of tools on the editing side that make it easy for someone who doesn't know what they're doing uh, to come in and start making, which is great. The best use that I have right now is when I make videos uh, of my book reading. So I'll read a book quote every day uh, from my book and I'm promoting it. And I'll record it as an IG story. It goes over 15 seconds, so now it's multiple IG stories. So I'll download them, upload it to TikTok, and then uh, TikTok merges the videos easily together. So then I'll download my TikTok and I'll post that to Twitter and LinkedIn. Because mm. I don't want to have to edit 15 second videos together. Right? So there's some ease, there's some convenience. Um, it just depends on what your goals are for your business. Awesome. I, I like uh, for, for a guy like Alex, like Alex could get, you could get, man, you could get lost in the world of TikTok. You can, yeah, have so so actually, fun. you can have so much fun in TikTok, but then you get no work done. Like I can see that happening. Yeah, that's, that's so actually that happened a couple of weeks ago. So I, I, with my, you, uh, with Android right now, I love Android. They have this well-being app in it where basically you set a limit to, to any app, how long you can use it in 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. So I said 30 minutes for TikTok. And now I just don't open it at all, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, I got to be careful with it. Um, anyway, my one word is capacity. Any thoughts on how to create a service such as training and development? Um, Alex, cut out. Hello? Hello? You cut out for a second. I died and you cut out. Hello? We both, I'm back. We both had issues. At the you hear time. me? Yeah, you're back. I hear you. Oh, listen, I don't like these. I, I think, man, I. We One second, just. You have to stop. Someone just called me. That's why. What? Got it. Alex, Hello? come on. Yes, I'm here. Okay, let, uh, let me uh, do a quick shout out to the people in the Twitch chat. So we got Sunshine Online. Hi everyone. I love when your Ethan book is really cool. Redemption Rav wants to know who's Alex. Alex Sayan runs Toronto Dance Salsa. Entrepreneur. Hero to many, man of the people, hashtag belong. He's in the book. He's, he's got a picture in the book. He hasn't shown that off yet, but he's got a picture in the book. And uh, you, if you know him, you'll love him, probably. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that means Alex, a lot. You Thank have you to man. stop using the stupid Android function. What? That what Android, Android function? function that tells you how much time you're, you're spending or like cuts you off? What? You just said you use an Android function that cuts you off from using the app. Certain apps. Yeah, yeah. TikTok, yeah. Stop yeah, yeah. using it. It's yeah. a crutch. Yeah! Done. Come on! All right. I'm done. All right, so I'll turn it off. Uh, so anyway, any thoughts on how to create a service such as uh, training and development? So figure out what you're passionate about, what you want to train people in, and figure out which, which demographic you're passionate about. Right, like, do you want to help? So the question is, my one word is capacity. My one word is capacity. Any thoughts on how to create a service such as training and development? 
So their one word is capacity, and they want to create a, they want to create a, maybe a training course or a personal development course, I guess, mm -hmm. right? So how do you go about doing that? Uh, create content of value to create an audience or to grow your audience, and then people are going to want to train with you. People want to train with Evan because for a long time he's been creating content that brings value to people. And so you have your, you have your, you have your course right now, right? We do it two times a year now where you train 10 to 15 entrepreneurs. They, they fly in from around the world to our dance studio actually. So, and, and we work with them for three days and we train them. But that's because Evan has a base uh, audience of people who he brings value to, right? I mean, kind of answering for you there, but Evan, what are your, what are your thoughts? How do you create a training course and development course? No, okay, so listen guys, it has to start with coaching. It has to start with you helping people. Be, think about what a training is or what a book is, right? It needs to be a result of you having helped a whole bunch of people and then you know what problems they have and what questions they're gonna have, what they come up with, and then you can make training material off of it. So uh, I don't know if you guys, you know, flashback to when I was mentoring a, a young woman named Lily who was doing coaching. Uh, sorry, she wanted to be a speaker. And like, okay, great. You, you could be a speaker, but what you have to do is you have to do coaching. Even if you don't long-term want to do coaching, you have to do coaching because think about what, what is a speaking gig? A speaking gig is you're talking to a bunch of people who are all individuals with their own individual problems. And if you've coached them and helped them one-on-one, -on -one, then you know how to be a better speaker. So yeah. it starts with, it starts with one on, I mean, I don't know, they didn't say what they do, right? Like what kind of business or what kind of training? No. Okay, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's gonna, it's, it's gotta be helping people one on one individually. And then from there you build up, what it's great, cause hey, if you're good, then you start making money at it, right? You could charge for it. People wanna get to scale before they've even done anything. Yeah. Um, okay, next one. Best place to write your book. Best place to write your book where there will be where there will be an audible version. How do you record the audible version? So best place to write your book. Um, any place where you feel like you can focus and enjoy the environment. I mean, Evan, you're the writer in the family. So what do you say? The Wait. best place to write a book. Where there will be an audio, audible version of it, though. That's a weird... Yeah, well, I think... Question. Yeah. How do you record an audible version? So, I honestly question. don't know. I've done two of them. But I, my publisher takes care of that, right? I mean, they usually sub out to... Uh, they sub out to uh, uh, another agency. So, the first book I did at, at Justin Bieber's studio in, in Canada, in Toronto. And the second one I did at... Um, another studio uh, and then they take care of all of the I, I don't even know what goes I don't know how to publish it and push the buttons to put the audible but it's figure outable um, I would make sure you have a really high quality sound like what we're doing this is don't don't record it into your phone right like have, have you either at a studio or you're doing it with um, you know a friend's equipment or something because people who buy audiobooks really care about the audio quality um, and in terms of writing the book, yeah, wherever you feel most at home, most natural, most in the flow. I used, I used to always do it outside of the house. I never write the book at home. I wrote it in the car. I wrote it at Whole Foods. I always wrote it on the road because it just gave me more energy, at least for writing, for creative stuff, being, being you know, moving around. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Just, uh, it just, it closed on me, so I'm trying to catch up on the questions. Uh, okay. Oh, we got, we got, we got something in the Twitch chat saying, uh, Alex is amazing. He's so kind and fun. Oh. Then shine. Uh, oh. I see the book is called Built to Serve. Yeah, I know, I know. We're doing it. We're making it happen. Sinshine just launched a new website, homepage today. I like it. Momentum, momentum. All right. What's the next question? Uh, uh, well, we're going to kind of start at the bottom and then I'll try to get back on top, but, um, who do I talk to create, to create an art show? Um, I mean, this is a little bit out of my expertise, but Evan, any ideas? Who would you talk to if you wanted to do an art show? 
uh, I would one, I would start by just creating my own show and partner with anybody, right? Like I would, I would find a dance studio and say, hey, you want to do an art show? Right? Like I look at even the early days of TDS, uh, before we had a spot, right? TDS didn't used to have a location. It was, it was always uh, kind of renting from other, other spaces. When we were doing events, we'd partner up with a different venue. And I would go, I went, I went and made a deal with a restaurant uh, and said, hey, your restaurant is pretty dead on these days push you, push you. at night. How about we come and do an event and we'll bring people in? And we, we basically cut a deal, right? So think about businesses that you could potentially do a show at um, and then offer them some kind of opportunity. Ultimately, you want to be with somebody who's going to be doing the shows themselves, right? Then you could tag into the your play. But a lot of times what they're going to want to see is that you've done it before. Like if you want to be a speaker, people are going to want to see, well, where have you spoken before? And if it's nowhere, they don't want to make the mistake and bring in the person who then just kind of sucks that they've never done a speaking gig before. Right? Mm -hmm. So start betting on yourself. Start creating your own shows. Find a local business that you can partner with and make your first show. You there, Alex? Yeah, yeah, I'm still oh, here. Right. I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. okay. How are we doing on? Our, how are we doing sicko in the game? Go. Is that a good thing? Hold on. Is that a sicko good thing? mode? Alex is sicko mode. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Okay, like sick. But how? But it's a new current stream. Well, listen, we're trying to do a new thing. Redemption Rap. My Twitch chat is not happy that I'm talking to you. First off, we're talking to the audience. But we're doing we're taking questions from my IG audience as a, as an experiment. Uh, so yeah, sicko mode is good. They're liking Alex. Everybody's liking Alex. Instagram, Twitch. I had to be, listen. This has been a turnaround. On our first IG live, thirty minutes ago, we were getting questions about can I host instead of Alex? So I just ask the questions, and we don't have to listen to extra talking. But now there's, there's a lot of love happening. So this is, what a turnaround. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the turnaround is really what's happening. Okay. Thank you guys. Um, I mean, I hope I'm, bring, I'm, I hope I'm bringing more value to you guys. Um, how's the game going, by the way? Are you, cause you said earlier you died. Yeah, I mean, we I don't know losing, how losing, but now we're, we're winning. So oh, we'll okay. See what happens. We'll see what, are you gonna take okay. credit? Are you, wait, are you gonna take credit for my victory? Cause you, you just wanna not. own the loss. <laughs> <laughs> because I was not involved in the loss. <laughs> but you're not involved the in the victory either if it happens, so. No, I'm just trying to bring more value to your audience. That's all I'm doing. Okay, all right. I'm just doing me. All right, so uh, who is your favorite entrepreneur? So for me, uh, my favorite entrepreneur would be Kevin Hart. I, I absolutely love him. Um, um, I'm watching actually his Netflix special, the, um, sort of the episode of his life. Um, cause he didn't really come from much and he's working hard and as an entrepreneur mentality, uh, heartbeat company and, and, uh, laugh out loud channel. He's starting, he's expanding into so many different areas. Um, but he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. So I really, really admire that. He was the first guy who got a signed deal. I think it was from Nike, I believe, uh, who was not an athlete which is a big deal. So he's not an athlete, but he got a signed deal from Nike. So that's incredible. So um, he's, so, I actually I have a little poster of him in the inside of the dance studio, uh, just to remind myself to, to work hard and be funny and all that stuff. So for me, my favorite entrepreneur is Kevin Hart. What about you? I would die to meet Kevin Hart. Oh my God. Evan, can you please arrange this? Can we get you, to, can we please, can you? That's not Come gonna on. happen because I don't I don't need Alex then. <laughs> we don't want we don't want a dead Alex. Uh, Fair enough. Um, I mean, no, uh, I think Howard, Kevin Howard. Hart, I think Kevin Hart is another he's another Kanye to be honest. I mean, uh, mm. just well, in the sense that he's kind of disrespected as seen as just kind of the Joker, but right. there's a lot of genius here that people don't know or realize like work ethic plus just genius. 
uh, that, yeah, we, that we should, he, he doesn't get the hate of a, of a Kanye, right? Because he's always yeah. so positive and happy, but he's a lot, he, I don't think many people would think of, because you said entrepreneur, right? Most people wouldn't think yeah. of him as an entrepreneur. Oh, no, he's, he's, he's a crazy, yeah, he's a crazy house guard. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, what would be for you? Howard Schultz, would you say that? No. Nope. Your favorite entrepreneur? No. Nope. With Kanye? No. Nope. No. Are you watching the screen? It... Oh. Wow. I... Right. Fair enough. Okay. That answers that. I think... Uh... Okay. AP Janini Sorry. is his name, ladies and gentlemen. AP Janini. Okay. Founder of Bank of America. He's, he's behind me on the wall here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's my favorite entrepreneur of all time. He's the, he's the, believe, the believe banker. He bet, on, he bet on the little guy when nobody else would, would believe in him. Gave Walt Disney the money to start his first movie when everybody thought he was crazy. Would, would, you, would you say that that's why, I mean, sort of having him as a role model influenced you to bet and believe on people who are the underdogs? But like, so if you look at me, right, like no leadership experience, the underdog. And so, you know, you kind of bet a lot on me and you still bet a lot on me to build something amazing. Would you say that because you have kind of connected with him that that kind of influenced that or no? That was just always you? Other way around. It's who you are and that you resonate with him. Believe is in, believe in, in you, believe is inside you, right? Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, sorry, what, what's the topic of this live? So we are answering your questions. So you pick the topics, you pick the questions, and we answer them. That was, that was your question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for sharing. As usual, you provide endless amount of value. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Hashtag believe. Mo my pleasure. Our pleasure, Stephen. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you for continuing to watch. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Evan and Alex. You're welcome. Most welcome. Awesome tip, Evan and Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what do I talk? Oh, yes. Yeah, so we answered that. So we come back to that question. What are your views on growing a business with TikTok? So we just answered it. It depends on your, um, depends on your demographic. You tend to have a younger audience group with that. So uh, the thing that Evan mentioned was um, you can get a lot more views and hits with TikTok right now as it's growing and exploding. Um, it's what YouTube was, what would you say, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Evan? Kind of how, how you could grow a reach no, so much quicker YouTube or no? No, YouTube was never easy, dude. YouTube I was never yeah. easy. YouTube okay. was never easy. But it's what Instagram used to be. Okay. Fair. Uh, hello from Toronto, my good friends. Hey, how's it going? All right. Someone from Toronto. I like it. Uh, yeah, me too. Uh, what one book do you suggest to read? Um, for me, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, I read that book six or seven times. The first time I think I read it was 17 or 18. Uh, it's an incredible book. And why I love it, it, it focuses on how to bring other people up. Uh, and through love and care, how to win people over to your thinking. I have wow. to say of all the books, that would be the book that I found because it, it's, it's sort of uh, anti-manipulation, anti anti, it's just love. It's love and care and understanding and putting high standards for other people that people want to live up to. Right, Sunshine, that's right. Listen, I spat on myself. I'm looking at the Twitch chat. Alex, Sunshine's got it. I love Alex, but who oh. said the book to read is built to serve. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, Alex. She says, "How many books <laughs> is Alex actually in? <laughs> How many books is Alex in?" <laughs> Dale Carnegie was not shouting out Alex for sure. <laughs> no, it's all good. Ah, uh, built to serve. Don't just delete all of what I said. Don't deserve. That's the book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be in Evan's fourth book. That's for sure. All right. Right? Let's keep going. Come on. <laughs> uh, 
Are so, you, cr are, sorry, go ahead. Hold on. Yeah. No, so, so, I mean, so for me, that question, I actually want to fix the question. That's not a good question to ask. And, I'll, and, and honestly, I don't think people should really answer it. That question is like, who should I marry? Like, what book you should read? Well, what are you going through? What do you need help with? Right? Like, what video should I watch? I don't know. What are you struggling with right now? This, this is, this is, and, and not to, not to be, um, you know, mean or negative or, or nasty, but this is when you, this is the importance of asking specific questions. Because when you get a generic question, you get a generic answer, which isn't mm -hmm. going to be all that helpful for, for the person. Like maybe, maybe it's a good book, but if you ask the more specific question, like, hey, I'm struggling with this. What book should I read? Maybe we can actually give you the answer that then changes your life. So, and, and that's for everyone. The more specific a question you can ask, and forget about me and Alex, just in general, the more specific question you can ask people, the better chance you get of getting a specific answer that can change your life. And go rebuild the surf, because it's great. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, are you hiring creative minds? Evan, I think this question is for you. I mean, I'm hiring, I'm hiring dance instructors. I'm hiring people that want to change the world. That's who I'm hiring. So if you live in Toronto and you want to help people and you want to serve people and uh, you're a dancer, hit me up. Hit me up on Instagram. I want to meet you. I want to grab a cup of coffee. I want to get to know you. But uh, Evan, what about you? Are you hiring creative minds? How, answer, how Alex reframed that question is how you need to think about it. Because nobody's going to say, nobody's going to hire you after that. That's the problem. Everybody needs a creative mind. But what can you do? What are you good at? Right? How can that bring value to somebody's business? If you want to get a job, you want to get clients, or you want to get hired for something, they need to know what you're good at. Back to the specifics, right? Be specific. Alex then helped you get more specific for him. He said first, no, I'm not. But then, hey, if you're in Toronto and you love to serve and you love caring for people and you can dance, then I want to come and meet you. Right? So you have to layer that. Creative mind with what? What are you good at? What can you bring value to? This is, I'm getting hit up all the time after Gary Vee's advice of, of hitting up Gary Vee said, go hit up all the all the people you look up to and say, I will eat dirt for a year and work with you and pick up your laundry and do whatever you want because I, I want to be around you and then show the hustle. But the problem is most people don't need somebody. I don't need somebody to pick up my laundry. I don't need somebody to drive me to work. Right? So what's the skill set that you can bring that, that is valuable? So I believe you're a creative mind. I love it. How do you apply that creativity? How can you bring value? And the best thing you can do is not ask how you can help somebody. It's not, hey, Alex, how can I help you? It's, hey, Alex, here's how I can help you. Right? If you said, I'm a creative mind programmer, and I, and I think your website sucks, and I can develop the crap out of it, Alex is going to take a coffee with you. But that's, what, that's, that's not what he was thinking when you say creative mind. Right? That's the problem. So you have to be more specific. Everybody's always hiring creative minds. But are you the right creative mind? I don't know. Teach me. Tell me what you do. Tell me how you can bring value. Yep. Awesome. And thank you for the little compliment. What was the compliment? Appreciate the love. That I reframed the question. Oh. Yeah. I feel like that was a compliment. Sure. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it wasn't, okay, it so wasn't, uh, it wasn't an insult. Listen, man. No, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's Listen, love. It's always love. If you're going to insult Alex, you would know. How are we doing in the game? Uh, we're winning. We're winning. Nice. Yeah, it's happening. Okay, picking it up, picking up, yeah. picking up. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Uh, how can you grow a new YouTube channel? Okay. Any advice? Any advice on growing a YouTube channel? Release content, lots of content. 
as much as you can. One or two videos a week are not enough. Do partnerships. Partner up with people who have a bigger audience than you and bring them value, right? Look at, look at groups that, uh, look at other channels that you can bring value on. Try to partner with them because then you can cross promote and the people who follow the other channels can come and join you. Um, yeah, but content, release content, release content, content that you care about, content that lights you up. Evan? Yeah, you, you have to learn how to create good content. So I'd be uh, making as much content as possible, just not from a, not even from an algorithm perspective, just for you to get good at it. You're not going to be good at the beginning. That's okay. Expect to suck. Awesome. Now every day go off and make content. And slowly you'll get better. I, the only thing that saved me, and I don't, I mean, I think back to when I started. It took me 350 videos until I wasn't completely embarrassed by my own content. Like I couldn't watch it back. 350 mm. videos. The only thing that saved me is I just kept going. I'm naturally introverted. It doesn't come out in settings like this. I am not. I am not the life of a party. Uh, I have. I have like. Talk about compliments. Like Alex has more charisma in his, you know, pinky finger than than I do in my whole body. But I'll work. Like the thing Alex needs is just to. If he made videos every day, he would crush me. That's that's the that's the challenge with a lot of people. Talent, just not doing the work. Like Kevin La, uh, Kevin Hart puts in the work, and he's talented, but he's putting in the work every day to do it. So that's the only thing you're missing. Put in the work, make videos every day so that you can get good at it, where you're proud of your work that you're making. And then you can start worrying about the algorithm and what you love and all that stuff. Like making the perfect thumbnail and title and all, it's not going to help you yet. The first step is you need to get an arsenal of content and you to develop a new style and figure out how to actually make it. That's the first step. Very noisy again, Alex. I, well, what are you hearing? Like a kid dying or something. What? <laughs> <laughs> this kid, this little girl was yelling. Somebody is so sunshine in the Twitch chat saying, your old videos are cringy. <laughs> but they That's inspire the me when I cringe at my own videos to keep going and I'll get better. Yeah. Yeah. So I kept all my videos up. You can go back and watch them. My first video. Go go watch Alex's first videos versus my first videos. Mine are brutal. Yeah. But you grow through that, right? Huh? You grow through that. Well, only if you keep going. People quit. They expect yeah. to be great. They expect their first video to crush. Like a lot of people in that situation, I don't know this person, but a lot of people in that situation, they make four videos like, oh, it's not going well. Oh my God, I suck on camera. I'm never going to get this. Like, you did four videos. Right? Yeah. It takes a while to develop your style to actually get decent at anything. Um, all right, so let's keep going. Hi, I got one question. I have a feeling that I am not making progress in personal growth, even though I am always learning and trying to improve. Uh, very general question, but I imagine that if you're asking it, you're probably just not making progress in a part of your life where you want to make progress. You're, right? Like, all growth isn't created equal. Where, where do you feel like you're actually lacking in growth? Is it like in relationships you're lacking growth? So are you single and you're trying to be, to have a great partnership? But personal growth is such a big topic. It doesn't, try, uh, I uh, just, I'd say be more specific. Feeling that I'm not making progress in personal growth even though I am always learning and trying to improve. So it, g career growth, relationship growth, what is it? I don't know, Evan, do you have a different way of answering that? Um, in moments of desperation, you be a little more gentle on yourself and say, you're, the fact that you're asking that question means you care about growth and, and also means that you pro you're probably already growing way more than any of the people around you. The fact that you even care about it. Most people you say personal growth to, 
and they start looking at you like you're some uh, alien or something. Like, oh no, is it gonna? You're part of some cult. You're gonna infect me with your <laughs> good vibes, right? Like, so. <laughs> so cut so like, deep when you say that. The words, and you either bother to, you know, watch the show and ask that question means you've already you're already growing. You're doing some of it, right? Which is which is great, but uh, it's still nothing compared to what you're capable of, which is the frustration. So you need to figure out what the block is. What are you afraid to do? You want to do something, but you're afraid to do it. I don't know what, but you're afraid to do it. That's the problem. That's what you need to fix. Because you will not get the growth you're after until you do that thing that you're afraid to do. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm starting as a makeup artist and I'm reading and I'm reading Think and Grow Rich. Uh -huh. do, you, do, you, do you think that is a good start? Uh, I mean, I've never... Think and Grow Rich. I've never read that book, so I mean, I don't really have a thought on it, but... Evan? So somebody's starting to be a makeup artist and they're, they're, they're reading this book. Is that a good place to start? I like it, um, but it's just... Like in the time of asking that question, just go read the book. That book you can read in, in it's, a, it's a super quick book. Super short, easy to understand. So just start. Don't judge yourself. If you like it, with any of these books, pick it up. See if it's, see if like something in the first couple pages strikes you. And if it is, keep going. And if it's not, move on and move on to something else. I think your, your best bet at the beginning is gonna be trying to find other Somebody who's built a salon, right? Is it a hair salon? Is that what they said? Uh, makeup artist. Makeup artist. Great. So yeah. if I'm you, I'm probably studying other makeup artists. I'm looking at, like, how did, how did L'Oreal get started? How did all these other companies get started? What can you learn from their success? That's, that's what I would try to be pulling out as much as possible. Um, but whatever. Think of where which is going to take two days of your time in the evenings to read. Pick it up, yep. read it, and move on to the next thing. If you're uh, learning from it, it's great. Don't judge yourself for having to make the perfect call and having the perfect book. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Alex is like an Evan meme. What is I that? I thought mean? that I don't know. So, I, looks. I'm like an. I'm like an. I'm like a meme of you. Alex is like a. It's a compliment, I think. But Alex is like an. Is like a Evan's meme. Okay. I thought that it was Evan giving advice. You are doing great, Alex. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. I'm a All meme. Right. Awesome. Let's uh, let me put, let, let's put me on t-shirts. People will start wearing Alex meme t-shirts. Uh, Own it. Uh, uh, amazing answer, and I appreciate that. As always, the Believe team. You're most welcome. Uh, Kid dying, LOL. <laughs> so I'm catching up with Evan's comments there. Awesome. Is it okay to make crappy videos? Like, is it okay to give 60% at first, but just to get started? Ooh. Uh, yes. And no. <laughs> for me. So the first answer for me would be, is it okay to make crappy videos? Yes, your videos will be crappy. If you're making videos and you're already great, you waited too long. You waited too long. You should have made the videos way sooner. You, you, you just postponed this too long, worried about perfectionism. Is it okay to give 60% at first just to get started? Um, I think that <coughs> being okay knowing that you're not great but still releasing it is good. And and not about the work that's also so sorry we just, i think we just got a little disconnected there can you still hear me yeah, i got you now yeah oh okay got you now so here yes you can hear me. yeah we're here anyway uh but at the same time you should be proud that when you left that workout when you left that, that when you finished that video that you put real effort into it so I don't know. Sometimes 60% is the best you can do. Sometimes 60% is all, you, you're super sick, you had a stressful day, and like 60% is what you can release. 
but you're if you're always just doing 60% um how proud can you be of that right i don't know so it's a yes and a no yes release crappy videos cuz you don't have the skill set yet to we do something to make hey, you're learning we won we won oh amazing we won so alex made brings a little bit of luck let's oh wait no i'm not taking credit i'm not taking credit i'm not taking credit wow wow you know uh and help i got to watch that i'm not taking credit <laughs> wow all right so we're one and one with alex so far we're one and one with alex so far okay yes. anyway so are we we're, we're and so there's a bunch of more questions but we're going to end it so for anyone we're we're ending this live stream we're going to restart yes in 5 yes. seconds come on back for yes. your questions yes. Alex is going to go fast to the questions yes and we're going to hit it let's go yes all right let's do it